What's up guys, in this tutorial we're going to be going over how we can use built-in functions inside of Roblox Studio. Let's get right into it by going over to server script service, clicking on the plus icon and adding a script. I keep on deleting mine after I'm done with these videos, but it's fine because I can just keep on adding them back in. So I'm going to start with a simple variable, we're going to say local spawn location, this is going to be equal to game.workspace.spawnlocation. So now we have our spawn location reference. Now I want to show you guys a few built-in functions that we're going to be using. There are a lot of built-in functions, so I'm not going to get into all of them during this video. However, we might get into a few more at a later date. So the first one we're going to be using, let me just get rid of that spawn location right there, is colon wait for child, just like this. And in fact, if we just use the colon right here, you can see a whole list of different built-in functions right here. Each one does a completely different thing. You can even find a description on a lot of them over here on the right, which is very useful for learning how to do all of them. However, we're using wait for child. Wait for child, just like this. And this takes parentheses and quotation marks inside of those parentheses. So now inside of these quotation marks, we're just going to put our spawn location right here and what this is going to do is it's going to wait for the spawn location to be inside of the workspace or the parent object until it continues with the rest of the script and what that means let's say i had a print statement right down here and i'm just going to name say like spawn location found just like this if i were to go into the workspace move the spawn location out of there right i'm just going to put it inside of lighting for now and run the game Let's go ahead and open up the output. You'll see it's never going to print that print statement because it's never going to find that spawn location side of the workspace. Even right here, it's saying infinite yield possible on workspace wait for child spawn location. However, if our spawn location is inside of the workspace, just like this, and we click run, it is going to print out spawn location found, which is pretty cool. So basically, it's going to hold up the rest of the script until it finds this spawn location after that let me get rid of all this real quick and so the next one we have is colon find first child this one is very similar to wait for child but it's just going to find that child instead of waiting for it so let me get rid of this print statement right here so we put the same thing that we're looking for inside of these quotation marks right here in this case is the spawn location and the find first child function is going to search for a child object within another parent object and it's going to search for it by name uh, however you'll notice that i can put print statements down here in a print this code is still running so what's going to happen is that if we click on run it's going to print this code is still running and what happened here is it found the spawn location inside of our workspace However, if we move our spawn location back into lighting and click on run, it is still going to print this code is still running because this will find, well, this will try and find that child as soon as this variable is declared. So since at our top of our script right here, it's gonna go ahead and find the spawn location. If it finds it, great. If it doesn't find it, it's not gonna care all too much. With the wait for child function, it's just gonna wait until it actually can find that thing. So that's the main difference between those two. So let me get rid of all of this stuff right here. We're going to say game.workspace.spawnlocation. And let me just move this back into workspace real quick. Now the next one that we're going to be using is colon destroy. Just like this with parentheses on the end. So the destroy function is used to remove an object and all of its descendants and children and everything that's inside of it from the game. This is useful for getting rid of like unwanted parts or unwanted scripts. Basically anything you don't want or need anymore, you can just destroy it just like this. And you can even combine this with the find first child or the wait for child built in function right here. and. You can use multiple of these in the same variable or function at the same time. But I'm just going to use a dot spawn location right here. And if we were to click run, you can see that our spawn location is nowhere to be found because it was destroyed, which is pretty, pretty cool. Now, just like the destroy built in function right here, we have another one where we just use colon clone. Now, what the clone function does is it creates an identical copy of an object. So we have our normal spawn location right here inside of the game. 
and then we have our spawn location that we're going to be cloning and this spawn location when we clone it it's just going to be floating out in nowhere it's just kind of suspended in mid space basically so that's why i want to give it a few properties so we say spawn location dot name let's just change it to something else i'm just going to change it to uh, spawn location number two and then we say spawn location dot parent will be equal to game dot workspace just so we can see it let's go ahead and click on run and they are both going to be right on top of each other but inside of our explorer you can see that there is a spawn location two and a spawn location and we can move these around you can see there are now two of them so in summary let me just write out a few variables for you guys. We have our wait for child built in function, find first child built in function, destroy built in function, and the clone built in function. This one waits for an object to exist. This one finds a child by name. This one removes an object and everything inside of it. And then this one will create a copy of an object. And keep in mind, you aren't limited to just using these things on the spawn location side of your game. You can do this with parts. You can do this with scripts. You can do this with anything, any instance or object inside of your game. So feel free to mess around with that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.